Welcome to the 3D Expo On Demand virtual event series hosted by Henry Schein and sponsored by Densply Serona. This video serves as part one of the four-part series, which features Dr. Sam Bullwinkle as he explains the simple steps it takes to integrate technology into your practice. Making guest appearances are also Dr. Robert Timothy, who is a clinical instructor at the University of Utah School of Dentistry and private practice owner in oral radiology, as well as Doug Fettig, dental CPA and VP of Business Development at Health Professionals Alliance. Enjoy. Fantastic. Tracy, thank you so much. We want to thank uh, Henry Schein. We want to thank uh, Densify Serona for giving us this opportunity to come to you guys uh, live from Arizona. We want to say welcome to our playground. Uh, we're we're, we're uh, affectionately renaming 3D Infusion the playground. The playground is open. It's sunny. It's warm. Um, Doug Fedig, who is his on, you'll hear from him a little bit later. Uh, he's up in Portland surviving ice storms and power outages. For those of our friends that are out in the south, uh, southern U.S. and Texas that are suffering with uh, the weather and, and power outages, our, our thoughts and prayers are out with you guys as well. Um, but we uh, hopefully you'll get an opportunity to see this and sign up. Maybe you'll see a recorded version. We, we'd love to have you back uh, at our subsequent uh, mini series. Again, this is our, our, our first series, our first piece uh, of the mini series. So we're going to get started and throw up a, a slide on the screen and let you guys take a look. So uh, this is the, the 3DI Pro mini series. Uh, we're talking about 2D versus 3D. Uh, we're taking about an hour today to go through that. You're going to notice that uh, I've got a lot of energy. We've got a, I've got a lot of squirrels. We'll go a lot of different directions. I need a lot of interaction from you. We've got a chat line. We're monitoring our chat. If you have questions, please throw a chat in there. Um, you know, jump in, uh, get some interaction. We'd love to, to hear from you if you, you've got questions about uh, 3D imaging, the comb beam, and, and questions about uh, any dialogue or direction that we, we take in this. Um, but uh, next week's going to be a lot of fun. If you, si if you like what you see today, sign up as quick as you can for next week. Next Tuesday, we're going to be broadcasting live a 10-minute implant. So we actually will walk through the software, the guide, and we'll pro pro uh, provide a live feed. We'll have a live patient here at 3D Infusion and do a 10-minute implant, demonstrate the workflow, the process, the efficiencies, and just uh, how simple a solution this technology can be to you and your practices. And then in uh, three weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, what else you can do with combing and how that drives uh, return on investment revenue in your front door. One of the things you'll hear from me, you'll hear from Doug Fedig quite a bit is, you know, do you teach me how to drive uh, revenue in our front door? Cost isn't so much as, as important. I'm not so much worried about trying to save as much money on the back end if I'm driving money in the front end. Obviously, it's a concern but I'm less concerned about that if revenue is coming in the front do door. So we want to talk to you about practice growth. We want to talk about moving into this digital world and really focus a lot. Have, you know, these, these 3D uh, mini series, these one hour events are really geared to give you an opportunity to sign up for our March 12th date. So on March 12th, it's a full day expo. So previous to COVID at 3D Infusion, we had these live events. It was actually a day and a half. You would come here with your team to 3D Infusion. You would actually sit toe to toe, knee to knee with Doug, with, uh, with Dr. Timothy. We had OSA, we had uh, some experts in sleep. Uh, we, we talked about orthodontics. We talked about really just revenue streams all associated with comb beam. And we got to sit here and talk about it, walk through, uh, take images of each other, take images of the patient. We have opportunities to have you do live interaction, meaning we can, we can actually credential you as long as you have a dental license somewhere in the U.S. to treat our patients here at 3D Infusion through the Infusion Foundation. A really interesting collaboration, a really unique collaboration to see live how this technology works. Get your team excited, go back to your practices and, and do more uh, for you, for your patients and, and for your community. Uh, with uh, COVID in the last, uh, last year, uh, it's been great to collaborate with Dents by Serona, with Henry Schein, and create these mini series. What we've created on March 12th is a live interaction, a virtual live series. So, what that means is we'll be live here. You'll have a unique opportunity to be live in your practice. We'll actually stream back and forth, interact. You'll have workflows that you'll go there. We'll do live patient here, and you'll have workflows that you'll have uh, a Dents by Serona rep, you'll have a Henry Schein rep, uh, you'll have the technology. Uh, as best as we can make it happen in your practice so you can see it, touch it, and then interact with us and bridge the gap. So it's as close to getting to live and in-person 
without being live and in person. So uh, these, these, these uh, Zoom meetings are great, but uh, this is gonna be that next level. So I know that we've got limited availability as you go through today's uh, experience uh, and the upcoming experiences. If that is of interest to you, talk to your uh, Henry Shine rep. Let's get you signed up. It, it, it will be a limited seating and, and that will be limited per uh, region or, or sitting geographic area as, uh, as the, the reps permit uh, uh, that availability. So wanted to do a quick uh, shout out to that so you guys understand the, the real unique uh, offering that's coming to us on March 12th. So without further ado, what are we talking about? We're talking about technology, disruptive technology, and what that does uh, as being introduced to our profession. And as always, anytime somebody talks to me as a, as a dental professional, I've been doing this for 22 years, graduated uh, University of the Pacific in 1998. So I've been doing this a little while. I've had a lot of technology, a lot of gimmicks, a lot of sparkly, shiny things brought to my office that I buy it at, chew, you know, chew on, purchase, and it goes into the closet. Um, you know, the question always is, you know, is this technology, is this offering, is this concept, you know, going to drive any new revenue into my practice? Is it going to make me a better practitioner? Is it going to give my patients a better experience? Um, that's always the question in the back of our mind. And, you know, the, the real question is then how do I make that happen? Is there, is there an opportunity to bridge that gap between the innovation and its application? A lot of times technology or uh, uh, concepts are introduced to our profession, brought to us by our, our, our dental uh, partners uh, at Henry Schein or, or, or uh, through other uh, you know, uh, other professionals that are saying, hey, this is what's fun. This is what we're doing. This is new and, and exciting. But how do we actually apply it? How do we bring that into our practice? So how, what's the, the methodology or the strategy to actually put it to work? Um, and so those are the three questions that are kind of looming over the top of us as we talk about disruptive technology. Now, disruptive technology, if you haven't heard the term disruption, always has kind of a bad connotation. I've got my practice streamlined. I've been doing dentistry the same way for two years, five years, 20 years. Why would I want to disrupt a good thing? Why would I want to make something different? Uh, disruption in this context and, and, and for our purposes today is actually a positive thing. A disruptive piece of technology is going to change the way we're currently doing something for the better. It's going to allow us to be more efficient, more productive, or, or see better, create, provide, a, provide a better experience for our patients uh, that, that we have interaction in our community and provide a service for our community. Um, so with that, I want to do something a little different than what normally we go through. I want, to, I want to do an experiment. So an experiment is typically as a dentist, we're doing our work, we get uh, a rep comes in, and a dealer rep or a manufacturer rep comes in our practice and always is trying to, hey, check this out, sell this, do that. And, and they're going through this process of trying to sell us something. As dental professionals, we sit back and go, you know, prove your point, make it happen. I want to try a new exercise because as a dentist, I'm a dentist. I've been into the technology uh, with CEREC, CAD CAM, um, and, and now the 3D imaging for probably the last seven to 10 years, 12 years. I, my comb beam I purchased in, in uh, 2012, uh, and it's just absolutely changed my life, changed my practice. Didn't understand exactly what that meant when I was purchasing it. So I want to try an experiment with you doctors and, and those that are on the call today. I want you to, in your mind, have already purchased it. So we're going to work backwards. I want to deconstruct. I want to work in reverse. You've already purchased it. In your mind, go through this experiment, this concept of, I've purchased a comb beam. What does that mean to my practice now? And let's take this hour to kind of deconstruct that. And you talk to yourself with the information that we're providing and see if it was a good decision or a bad decision. And so that's going to be kind of the premise of today's discussion is walking backwards. And let's see if, if purchasing a comb beam for your practice is a, is a benefit, uh, you know, a positive thing or a negative. So that's the idea as we walk through. So comb beam, what is a comb beam? I have patients every day come in and I'll have a comb beam and it'll, they'll say, oh, I had that image just over at my other office. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? It, yeah, it wrapped around, it did that thing. I'm like, okay, that could be a, a pano, but a comb beam is a little bit different. You know, it's a 3D image and they all are like, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure I had it. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, it took their image, 16 images, and, and, and you never ask, I never asked this one, would it take a thousand images? It does, it's amazing. So 16 seconds, of, 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 a, of a scan takes 600 to 1,000 images, 3D renders it and throws it into this image. 
It's amazing. I mean, here's, here's, here's my office and a patient getting scanned. So 16 seconds. When I introduced this to my practice, I introduced it to my team. Um, they're like, okay, well, what does this really mean? I was like, well, how, how much do you enjoy taking the full mouth series of x-rays? All 20 images on a patient with Tore or gag reflex. How much fun is that? Uh, put a patient in here and in 16 seconds, take your image. I get 600 slices or 600 images that are 3D rendered. I see things I've never been able to see before. So it, the, the concept of what this did for my practice, the, the uniqueness of this tool um, is really what Dr. Timothy's all about. He, that's his specialty. We're going to bring him on real quick and talk to us about why that CBCT is so special. Dr. Timothy, how you doing? Good. I was muted, so I didn't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody take themselves off mute. I want to hear dogs, cats. It keeps me focused. <laughs> I'm here in a bubble going, is anybody listening? All I hear is myself, and I'm, and I'm bored myself. So, yeah, you know, everybody, you know, if you guys got questions out there, please interact. Doctors, interact. Let's see what we got going, okay? But Dr. Timothy, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Um, your specialty is a, is a, 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 you know, we look at your little thing, it's an, a, I like to call it an A, a bomber, right? What, <laughs> a -bomber. what is the A bomber, A B O M R B O R M, uh, B O M R? What does that stand for? You know, all those letters don't, I, uh, I, I come from a kind of an interesting background. And so um, I was a general dentist for 23 years and practiced in a small town and introduced Cone Beam in 2011 into my practice in a town of 3,500. And I think it was interesting because when I asked Sam, Dr. Bullwinkle, uh, hey, you got a lot of technology, but you can only keep one, what will it be? And he pointed right down the hall and he didn't even, it was the first time we'd met and pointed at the cone beam. He goes, that's the one I'm keeping. I've asked a lot of doctors as I've lectured um, for training for uh, dent supply Serona and the, the answer is always the same. Once they have the cone beam, they, they, won't, they won't give it up. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a radiologist, but I asked my partner. Um, so we got the cone beam in 2011, the same year I got hurt. <laughs> and so I, I went back into to radiology and it was because of the training that I got along with the cone beam that I found out that there was, you know, oral radiology was a specialty. So I think it's kind of interesting. I was a CEREC doctor for 14 years. I had lasers. I had the whole, all the technology, but my partner now says the same thing that uh, Dr. Bullwinkle does. He wouldn't give up his cone beam now because in order to do more, you have to see more. He diagnoses better. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, at the school, uh, we had a tooth endodontically treated, looked fine on the 2D images. Uh, the students are like, well, the patient's in a lot of pain. Said, well, let's take a cone beam. Lo and behold, what do we see on the cone beam? Of course, it's a maxillary tooth with all that superimposed anatomy. And lo and behold, we can see a periapical lesion as well as apical root resorption. So there's something going on at the end of that. Looked like a beautiful endodontic filling material from the 2D because, you know, they've got to purchase right at the apex and we can't see that radiolucency. So it's, it's absolutely amazing that it helps us to see more and, and to do more. So cone beams, absolutely a game changer for, so, so for your practice. Dr. Timothy, if I was to ask you, what is unique? What's unique about a CBCT? Why is it a special uh, tool? What makes it so special? What would you yeah, say? It, yeah, well, it, what it does is it, it takes, so all that imaging <laughs> geometry, and it takes it so that now we don't have the superimposed anatomy, and we can see things in the axial, the coronal, and the sagittal views, and we can slice through those or scan through those. Um, I know that when I first do my training, especially with the students, like today we were doing uh, our implant planning committee, our IPC at the school, and the student wants to put up the 3D rendered. And I'm like, well, that's great, but that's not where the power is. The power isn't in that rendering. I mean, it's fun and it's good for education. And that's another great thing that it does is helps us to educate our patients. But the real power is in the slices. It's in the ability to go through those 1,024 slices with the Galileos or 512 if you have the SL or whatever. That's where the power is, the 512 slices in the different, the different views. Well, yeah, and I love that. I, I, you know, as we talk about that, I love that concept, the power of it. And, I, and, and for those that are participating, I'm going to show you what the rendering looks like, and then we'll walk through what slices look like. 
um, a little bit later in our discussion. So you'll see what Dr. Timothy is talking about. Um, but yeah, it brings power back to it. There's, you know, for most of my career until I had combing, there are, you know, there are instances where, where just case in point that like you just described. And, and I actually have an example, I think I'll show a little bit later in this discussion as well, where, you know, I'm telling the patient, patient's got pain, they've got an issue, but with the imagery I have, it's, it's guesswork. I'm like, well, I don't see, you know, good news is I don't see anything bad news. I don't see anything. Let's <laughs> wait for it to get worse until it shows up on a 2d image. And I can actually refer you for actual treatment. Otherwise, you know, am I retreating it? Am I pulling it? It's all just guesswork. Um, so I, I always felt a little bit handcuffed, uh, in the, in those discussions, cause I couldn't actually give my patient a definitive diagnosis. I had three or four op, you know, options of what it could be could be fracture, could be a sinus, could be, you know, could be nothing, could be just transient. You bit on it hard. You know, the patient's trying to describe to us their symptoms. We're taking those symptoms and trying to create a diagnosis with really limited imagery uh, and, and availability to see what's happening in there when we talk about standard 2D imagery, in my opinion. That's what I experienced. But let me ask you this. So I get this question all the time uh, from doctors. Are my patients not so much, but the doctors... There seems to be this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, this plague or this, this concept that radiation is bad. Well, how, you know, if you're getting 1,024 slices or 600 slices of imagery, what's my radiation exposure to my patients? What, what's the risk? And that's a great question. And we get it at the school um, all the time. You know, oh, I don't want this because I've heard it's so high in dosage. Well, so a large a large, like you have on your Galileo, so a large field of view is about equal to a digital full mouse series at 200 microsieverts. So if you put it in that, now I'm old enough, and there's probably many of the doctors out there that have been doing this for 30 plus years that realize that we used to use D-speed film, and it is a quarter the dose of a D-speed film-based full mouse series. So when we used to take those, and I don't remember a, a, a patient ever saying, well, I'm really concerned about this dose doctor when you take a full mouth on them. And I guess the reason is, is because it was needed. I said, well, I need to take a full mouth so I can see all of the apices of the teeth. I can see the bone level. I can see if there's caries. Well, that's exactly what we do now. We need to describe to our patient the need for it, why we take it. And it's at 200 microsieverts. That's the higher end. Now, the great news with the new machines, and almost every company has it, but some of the great things about the SL and the Axios is we now have machines that take a medium field of view for about everything we do at 18 to, so about the same thing as bite wings now, 18 microsieverts. We can get wow. down as low as five or six microsieverts on our, our low dose range. If we're looking at things like an impacted tooth, especially for youth, I love it for kids because if I have an ortho patient with impacted canines, I don't need to see that fine detail. So I don't need the resolution. I can dial that right down to the low dose, eight microsieverts, a couple PAs. And, right. and then you can see it in 3D because you're looking at a tooth. You're not looking at something that needs to be 0.2 <laughs> millimeters in, in resolution. So, well, and, and you know, that's, that's a, you know, it just seems to be that, that mentality attached to it, right? Um, I, I've had patients ask me that and I'm like, well, you know, for instance, my, my son just tore up his knee playing ultimate Frisbee. We survived the state championship 6A football, football. playing middle linebacker and uh, is playing Frisbee, tore his knee and everybody said ACL. Well, went to an orthopedic surgeon. They took their MRI. They took their, their, uh, their, their other uh, x-rays. They took ultrasounds, all radiation. I've never heard anybody tell the orthopedic surgeon, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the dosage. Let's back that off. If you can't see, you can't see it. If you can't see, you can't diagnose, you know, the discussion, the, the, this, this, this concept that dental radiation is bad kind of just blows my mind, especially when you understand that level of radiation, that minimal radi uh, amount of radiation. My favorite uh, discussion with anybody dental related um, they want to get down to the specifics and Doug, if you're, you know, I know you're, you've got your mic or at least your uh, headset on it. Two guys that have been in the profession like myself, you know, the combined, we're looking at what uh, I hate to say it, but close to 60 years, uh, maybe 65 years in, in, in dental uh, between the three of us. I don't know of one case 
where dental radiation was tied to any type of pathology. Is there any reported case in, in your studies, Dr. Timothy, or anything that you've come across, Doug, where, or, where dental radiation was tied to any type of oral pathology with a patient? Not aware of anything on my end. No, and it's really hard because cause and effect, or, but there's, there's a lot of new research coming out that shows that, um, that we just don't know for sure. That's why we're careful and that's great because it's all extrapolated from higher doses. So we know higher doses do cause these problems. Um, whether the lower doses do or not is, is still um, under investigation. So what we do is if it's not needed, we don't take it. Um, and that's using selection criteria, exactly what Sam talked about. So you, you get this and you say, well, it's about the same dose as four panoramic images. But if I took four panoramic images, I'm never going to see what I need to see. So it would be a waste of four panoramic images. So and, we'll, and if I'm going to take an FMX, I'm still not going to see what I need. And you see still might not see it. So what you do is you take, you use what you can so that you can better diagnose. And I think it's funny. After I do the training, when I get back in contact with these people, they are totally blown away. I, I have a couple of them that still refer to me in. And one doctor out in Ohio that still sends scans my way, he always drops me notes like, I cannot believe I practice without this. Now, the amazing thing about that is he came to our course and he had already practiced for 40 years, 35, 40 years. Yeah. The reason he bought it, probably not a great reason, but he said, look, my practice is so old. I've got a modernizer. None of these young kids are going to want it. Guess what? he's not even thinking about selling now because he's so excited. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really bought some, some re rejuvenated his practice and, I, and he, he, he loves it because of the cone beam. I'm telling you. So that's his testimony yeah. about it. So, yeah, I see that. I see that every day. I see that in my own practice. I see that with other doctors. One last question for you, Dr. Timothy, medical legal liability. What's the, yeah, I think I, I just know. lost What's the question. You lost me. I know everything froze for a minute. Medical legal liability. Yeah. What's our, you know, if we're taking that many scans, we're seeing it's an actual CT. We're seeing things we've never seen before. How do I get trained on seeing that? Um, you know, one of the unique pieces that Dents by Strona, why I love and, and been involved with them for, for the, these many years is when I bought my comb beam, there's training already attached to it. They still do that. One of the few manufacturers that really once you buy their product, they want to get you up to speed. They want you to feel comfortable. They want you using the product and being successful. So, you know, know and understand that's all tied into to the dense supply Serona product. But there's always, well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to take a scan because, you know, am I legally responsible? What's my medical legal responsibility? Can you, you address that at all? Yeah, this, this same doctor I talked about. So he, 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 he intentionally bought the smallest field of view from Dent Supply Serona because he was worried about this liability issue. So someone had told him if he buys an eight by eight only that, you know, that's the area he's been comfortable with. Well, I can tell you right now, he's a little bit frustrated with that because he has to move it around now to see, and he moves it around. And I'm telling you, cause he sends me some that are the sinus views and he sends me some that are, so, you know, he could have got a larger field of view. <laughs> and and the, the funny thing about that is, we have always been responsible for that anatomy. Um, if you take a pan, you're from the skull base clear down to C3, C4. And that's yeah. your mid-range field of view. Um, if you get any CEPHs, or, uh, then you're the full field of view like a Galileo. So you're from Sella all the way down to C5, C6. So we've all been taught this anatomy. We've all been responsible for it. The problem is we could never see it very well. Yeah. So... Uh, now you can, and I, and I just want to let you know that it's actually easier to diagnose pathology from the slices than it ever was from 2Ds. And so if you're meticulous, if you want to be a radiologist, they have training. And with a little bit of effort, you can learn to go through these. They're, it's not rocket science, man. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. well, so. and we'll, and we're going to demonstrate that a little bit. I'm going to demonstrate running through uh, an image, what it looks like, how quickly. And I'm just going to go live action to show, show you can see it. But one of the things I love is that as we get trained and get introduced to this technology, we have resources like Dr. Timothy um, that we see something that doesn't look quite right. I don't need to be able to diagnose it and call it uh, an OKC 
or, or any other type of pathology. I just need to know that it's different. And I've got a resource like Dr. Timothy. I can upload the scan. I think, you, what do you charge for scans? 75 Seventy-five dollars to, to, to get a read. This gives me a, a, ra a radiological read, just like any medical professional. Um, I got my scans for my son on his on his damaged knee. Well, guess what? The orthopedic didn't read all the MRI and all the information. He got a radiological report. He read the report and he says, "This is the damage. This is what we're going to do to fix it." And now that I have the report, I can show you on the imagery where that damage is. He doesn't read it. He sends it out for a read. So. We have that opportunity as dentists, you know, like Dr. Timothy, uh, if you have questions, concerns, he's a great resource. I've learned more from him and being able to read scans and walk through. I have a couple, you know, I have a patient, I'll send it to him. He sends them back the report, takes time to get on with me and go, this is what you're seeing. This is why you're seeing it. So the next time I see it, I can go, okay, I don't need to send every scan. So he's a great, great resource. Um, Dr. Timothy, thanks. Stay on, stay on with us. Um, and uh, if you want to interject or have questions or we have other questions come through the chat, we might, we might push them to you. Um, Dr. Timothy is going to be with us on March 12th again. Uh, he's going to walk through reads. He's going to take some time one-on-one -on -one where you can actually sit down and see exactly what he's looking at. And, and we can address maybe in a little more depth, the medical legal liability, uh, radiation imagery, and, and the dialogue to have with your patients. So uh, looking forward to that. Dr. Timothy, we got, we got one question. That's a great question. So the question is, is how, perfect. So uh, I'll just let them address that in the chat. So the question is, how do we look at the March 12th date? Um, uh, I'll have Henry Shine address that in the chat. I know they have a link. Um, I'll have them share that link and get you guys, you know, click on it, get signed up. Uh, it's gonna be a really, uh, a real powerful uh, day uh, with you in your office, uh, us here at 3D and our team showing you what this all looks like. So let's talk about the three simple steps of integrating comb beam. Um, and what that really means. So number one, and it's, this is just the easiest thing to do is take the image. I can't tell you how many doctors have this comb beam come to one of our courses and they're like, well, I've had it for a year. I've taken like six images. I'm like, I take, I take like 10 images a day. That thing's always cranking and burning because here's the deal. You already paid for it. You already bought it. It doesn't cost you any more to take an image take the image, just start out, get your team calibrated, you get calibrated, get trained, understand what the new normal is. When you take that comb beam, 16 seconds, you're seeing more than you'll ever see in, in a full mouth series. And, and it's just gonna open up your eyes. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the 3D rendering that Dr. Timothy was talking about. So 10 minutes to change your life. And this is an image of a patient early on uh, in, my, in my, my 3D career. So this is about seven years ago. And this showed up on the x-ray. And so as I'm scanning through, I'm like going, okay, I have no idea what this is. Uh, I'm looking at it. I send it out for a, a read. Uh, the read comes back and, and they, they describe it as some type of pathology. And I referred it in, I, I brought the patient back and said, okay, you've got something here, something we need to address. Um, do you have an ENT? And he goes, actually, I do have an ENT. Great guy, I know him really well. I said, okay take this image, I put it onto a disc. I said, go to get me with him and let him know that we found something on our CBCT that I want him to look at and address. Guess what his ENT told him seven years ago? The dentists are idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm not gonna even look at that image because I don't know what a, a CBCT is. If you're really worried about it, I'm gonna send you through and get, uh, get my own scan. So they did a CT and an MRI. Um, the report came back, yeah, there's some type of pathology. We need to do something about it. They went and did a biopsy and it was a carcinoma of the olfactory bulb. So I'm not, you know, as a medical legal and as a dentist, I'm not trained to diagnose that. And the ENT isn't trained to diagnose it. They have to go through this process. But I did have the opportunity and was trained to at least recognize that something was off. There's some abnormality and then could, could direct the patient. The unique piece with this is this patient came in and he said, you know, I've got this implant up here and the front of my face just kind of hurts, you know, around my nose, my tooth, is it the implant? Well, you know, in years past, I'd take an x-ray, the implant was placed by my, my specialist. Um, I would take an x-ray, refer him back to my specialist, he would have taken some x-rays and we'd be going, yeah, everything's fine. Until it gets worse, we're gonna let it go. With a comb beam, I was able to see this image, give proper direction to the patient 
And when they went in to remove this, this mass, that this carcinoma had penetrated this, his septum and was just starting to penetrate the base of the skull. And they were able to surgically remove it at completely, hit it with a little bit of radiation and 100% uh, and recovery. Uh, absolutely amazing. Talk about changing the patient's life, changing my life, um, changing my, my, you know, you talk about, Dr. Timothy talked about really just lighting my, my practice up and giving me energy being able to, to interact with my patients and provide a service is what I signed up for. I didn't sign up into dentistry, you know, 25 years ago to just sit around and, and cut out teeth and put fillings in them. I, I, can't, I signed up to be in the medical profession and provide a service and to help patients and, and people in my community. You know, that does involve fillings. It does involve crown. But now with the comb beam, I can truly see and diagnose and be a, a, be a, a medical provider uh, in, in my community. It's amazing. So what, what the new norm is now, everybody gets a CBCT. We're talking about co post COVID, we're talking about less contact, less time, more information. Uh, amazing concept that this was out prior to COVID. If you would have, we went through this prior to COVID, everybody goes, well, whatever. When you talk to your teams now, you're talking to your hygienist that has to take 20, F, you know, 20 images for an FMX on a new patient or your assistants, whatever your workflow is, versus 16 seconds to take a scan where they're six feet away, eight feet away, 10 feet away, depending on what your setup is, and they're pushing a button, the machine is doing it. Less contact, less time, less interaction, and more information. That is, uh, I mean, that is a win 100% of the time when you're dealing with new patients, dealing with your current patients. So to what becomes the new norm now is comb beam, four bite wings, a couple selected PAs if we need them of the anterior, and that is... Our, our, our new patient FMX. We can bill it out as an FMX. Uh, the insurances accept that as an FMX. I get more information. Um, so we, all of our new patients, any patient with a toothache, anybody coming in on emergency gets a comb beam. Again, more information. Uh, the more information I have, the better I can diagnose. Uh, anybody, any questions with that? Anything to discuss? Pretty, pretty straightforward concept. If you, have the, if you have the technology, use it. Take the images, take the images, take the images. Question patients of records. Patients of records, yes. So uh, we kind of treat them pretty much like we do any type of a panel or FMX. Every three years, you're getting one or the other. So every three year, a patient of record is going to get a scan automatically just as a routine. If they have a toothache or something in between that time and they're coming in because they broke a tooth, um, they broke a crown, they have any type of, uh, of pain or otherwise, we're going to get a comb beam as well. Um, and so that might, that might happen and take place uh, more often than three years, but a routine patient that's just in our recall system that isn't having anything significant is going to get a new comb beam every three years. Just standard of care, uh, FMX panel, it, it, it replaces that concept uh, as standard of care. Great question. Um, if they're coming, at, yeah, if every three years, it's either going to go out as a panel or an FMX, depending on what your system and what the insurance comes. So I can take uh, out of this imagery, I can take a slice, grab the panel, submit it to the insurance and, and bill out for a panel um, or an FMX, depending on how that, how the insurances interact with that. Um, a, a lot of times patients or doctors will ask, well, what, what about the patient that comes in with the toothache and you take the scan? Are you charging them a panel or an FMX? No. Typically, I don't charge them. I'm going to take a PA and a bite wing automatically. We're going to charge that. The panel, I let them know that it's a certain cost, whatever that cost is, two, three, four hundred dollars $400, whatever that cost in the office. I'm not going to charge you for this. This is strictly on my account. It allows me to see more. It's a service to you. I'm going to discount that off your bill. Insurance isn't going to pay for it because of frequency. I'm not going to charge you, but I need it in order to see the information. And it's a great patient tool. Patients appreciate that I'm willing to go the extra mile, get the imagery to give them the diagnosis and not worrying about charging them over and over and over and, and kind of nickel and dying, dying them through this process. Uh, is there any period maintenance for television? Yeah, great questions. We're going to get kind of deeper into this on March 12th. We'll walk through what that, that means, um, how, you, how you maintain. So the question was, are there any maintenance? Is there any periodic you know, uh, things you need to do to maintain the uh, technology? Absolutely, there is but it's real straightforward. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth on March 12th. Sound good? All right, number two, read the scan, read the scan, read the scan. Dr. Timothy kind of led us into that. Get it in front of you. The more you do it, the more you see it, the easier it is. Very much like dental school. You know, when we first looked at bite wings, we came through, we're in that dark room. For those of us that were back in the dark room ages, I remember running the slices through, having the magnifying glass, going up to a light source and going, okay, 
What am I seeing? You got to read it. Take it, read it. The more you do it, the more it makes sense. And again, a resource like Dr. Timothy to tell you what you're seeing. Take the image, read it, have somebody tell you what you're seeing, review it again. Great, great opportunity to, to expand your knowledge and, and, and your ability to, to treat your patients. So read the scan. It was great. Let me introduce what a 3D image looks like. So 3D image versus 2D image. 2D image on the left, 3D image on the right. If you guys can see that, it's quite a bit more involved, obviously. And let me show you what I'm talking about. This is an example like Dr. Timothy was earlier talking about. This patient showed up with a broken crown, right? So broken Emacs crown. For those of you that don't like Emacs, this is your, this is your you know, I told you, you can't put Emacs on a second molar because they're just going to break it. You know, I tell my patients all the time, I'll put a second molar, I'll put it back there, break it, I'll put a new one on there. I'd rather have that break than put something in there that I can't see, I can't treat. And when that finally fails, the tooth, we're losing it, right? So Emacs is my, I love Emacs. I've been using it my, my, almost all my career back when it was Empress II, uh, before they said we could even, uh, you know, bond it or conventionally cement it. So great product. Um, but this is what you see, 2D image. This patient shows up Monday, uh, showed, showed up yesterday, or it shows up uh, after this long weekend, uh, being stuck in, in the snow or ice. Uh, you know, Doug Feta gets the power back on and, and has a broken tooth because he's confined eating granola, um, you know, that's, that's expired, you know, three years expired, but that's what he's eating. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Was that, was that a Portland crown. crack? <laughs> you what? Was that granola a Portland joke? Come on now. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, you can read it for whatever you want. You're in your Subaru eating granola and broke this tooth because you're trying to stay warm from the ice storm. You know, it is what it is. It's great. So um, 2D image, right? 2D image. That's what we have. And with that image, I'm going to replace that crown. I've done this my whole career. Really quick look at it. You know, patient A, you know, you know, you know, you know, Janice, there's what's going to happen. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to make a new crown. You're going to be all better. With, with calibration of a team and a little bit of training and understanding, this patient gets a comb beam. What do we see when we see a comb beam? Check out this comb beam. So now we're looking to replace the crown. Uh, on that number 15, but what do I see? If you guys take a look at that, let me make that a little bit larger for you. We're gonna pump, bump that up. So what we are looking at here on tooth number 15 with that broken uh, uh, Emacs crown is a, a pneumatized sinusitis, so, uh, or a pneumatized sinus. So this is uh, information you get from Dr. Timothy. It's great, that means the floor of the sinus is, is expanded and pushed up into the sinus because of the infection around that root canal treated tooth. You also see a muco, uh, what do we call that? Just a, a sinusitis, muco, muco sinusitis. So a bunch of junk in the sinus, right? Dr. Timothy, what else would you call that? Now that's correct. And, and, and with the lesion there, then you would, you would put down in your report or in your report can be as simple as, you know, the CBCT was reviewed, but in your notes, you need to say, that you saw an odontogenic sinusitis. So this is, this is a odontogenic source, right? And right. you have that, that periosteal reaction that pushes the floor of the sinus up like you explained. And so you've, you've raised that, that floor of the sinus up there from this lesion that's growing around the apice of 15. Yeah, and so, so with this image, you know, the interesting co concept, and I discuss with doctors all the time is, you know, what would happen normally with 2D imagery if you saw this, Normally, I would cut that crown off. I'd put a new crown on there. That, that vibration and that movement would activate this, <laughs> this infection, most likely make it worse. And we've all seen it, right? A week later, that patient's back in the chair going, man, this tooth that you worked on is killing me now. It's, I'm just driving me crazy. It's coming me up all night. The weekend was horrible. I couldn't get enough you know, drugs in my system to create it. And so we look at it and go, well, let's adjust it. Well, we're going to adjust it. Let's give it a little bit more time. You adjust to give a little more time. They come back a second time. Now you're going, okay, go see the endodontist. The root canal treated teeth. Let's see what's going on. Root canal, the endodontist is going to look at it and go, oh yeah, you've got an abscess. We're going to do a retreat. So now he's drilling through my brand new crown and he's going to possibly fracture it because <laughs> if they're not used to working on Emacs and they create too much heat and they break, they can cut a hole in this, it fractures. They do the retreat. Now I'm seeing the patient back and I'm doing another crown. So I'm four visits down and two crowns later, all on, my, on my, my dime because I couldn't see this information to begin with. So now that I can see this information, I can get a proper diagnosis. My lost revenue, the cost of doing business 
significantly went down because I'm not doing treatment haphazardly or I'm, not, I'm able to see more so I can diagnose better and I can give more accurate treatment. It saves me time, saves my patient time and creates a more successful practice um, 100% of the time, which is a great lead in to, to, uh, to, uh, um, to Doug and talking about ROI. I mean, the, the simple fact that if I'm losing less money, that is worth its weight in gold. But when we talk about um, uh, ROI and investment, I'm gonna kick us down to, uh, to uh, let's see, go down the slide. I'm gonna do the intro. Where's their intro? We're, we're having a lot of fun. We're talking, interacting. Let's go. One more. There's my man. Doug, you're, you're on. So talk to me about ROI. Talk to me about investing. <laughs> versus purchasing, what does that really mean? If I'm gonna, you know, we've always been cued and kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the term, the Pavlov experience. We've all been conditioned to go, oh, that's gonna cost me X, you know, can I get it cheaper? But let's talk about cost versus investment. Year on, let me see what, we, what we're talking about. So before I do that, if you go way back to the beginning of this um, uh, program, Sam made a comment about the combined years of dental experience. I think he was just taking a dig at my gray hairs. But anyway, I, I know how Sam <laughs> operates, so uh, it's all good. Anyway, <laughs> for the March 12th event, and I'm, and I'm super excited about it. And by the way, if you ever get a chance to visit Sam's facility in person, it'll blow your mind. I've spoken around the country, and your facility, Sam, is far and away the, the, the best I've ever seen, and the training is incredible. But Thank you. Thank you. What the goal is now and on March 12th is to have you totally change your mindset on debt and investing. And a lot of you grew up, you know, with the, uh, the thought that all debt is bad. That is absolutely incorrect. As, as, the, as, the, as the owner of a dental practice, you're the CEO of your own business, okay? And every smart CEO in the world is going to grab low interest debt and leverage that to turn that into more wealth. Every, every smart CEO in the world. And so I'm going to maybe do something sacrilegious here. A lot of you have maybe heard of Dave Ramsey. He's a famous retirement guru. And his big picture uh, message is that debt is bad. Well, high interest debt is bad. Plus, Dave Ramsey's not talking to the CEO of a business. He's talking to someone who makes 75 grand a year and has $12,000 in high interest credit card debt. If you can get low interest debt through a lending program from Henry Schein, and you can take that money and invest in technology and turn around and explode your production, which Sam will show you how that's done on March 12th with one of his power blocks. The, the, the return on investment is phenomenal. It, it truly is. In all, the, in all the years I've worked with dental practices, when a dentist goes into the digital pool and jumps all in, we see a 25 to 30% increase in production. So a million dollar practice goes to 1.25 or 1.3 million. It, it, it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And so when we, when we talk about um, taxes and incentives, the return on investment also includes the benefits you're gonna get from depreciation. And I won't go down into the weeds, but when you buy a piece of equipment, let's say you spend $100,000 on technology. You can depreciate all of that in the first year if you choose to through section 179. If you're at a 40% combined tax rate, that $100,000 investment actually only costs you $60,000. The government's giving you $40,000 back. If you're financing that purchase through Henry Schein, that, that depreciation benefit has basically paid for the first 20 months or so of your payments. So you've increased your production. And in a sense, for the first 20 months, you don't have any cash outflow because the appreciation is covering your payments. So if, if one of you invests in technology and you increase your production by 25 or 30%, if you're a million dollar practice, that's an extra eight to $10,000 a month. If you finance that piece of equipment, your cash outflow is gonna be roughly $2,000. $10,000 inflow, $2,000 outflow, being very conservative. It's, it's, it's kind of a slam dunk. And I'm gonna ask a question. Let me ask Dr. Timothy. Dr. Timothy, so if I ask you, when you were a practicing dentist, did you practice dentistry 10 years before the same way you practiced it 10, you know, 10 years later? Did you, did you practice, did your dentistry change in 10 years, how you practice dentistry? 
Yeah, almost completely, yeah. <laughs> okay. And would you expect a dentist, a practicing dentist, for their dentistry to change from now till 10 years in the future? Or would they be practicing exactly the same 10 years in the future? It's going to change and probably faster than it has in the past. It's just amazing. And so my other question to you and to Sam, because I'm not a dentist, is there any question at all that digital technology allows you to provide a better standard of care for your patient? I think it does for sure. Now, originally when it came out, there was a, they were all about, oh, you're one of those Seric doctors. But uh, my partner, he didn't jump on it first. But after two years, exactly what you said, Doug, we were dead even for five years. We practice the same. We have about the same speed. But a year after my embracing the technology, I was 20% higher and I didn't change anything except for leverage the technology. So I could have it working in one chair while I'm doing a quadrant in the other chair and the Seric machine or whatever I have doing it is, is, is working for me. So. Yeah. A hundred percent. Same with me. I mean, um, you know, I was introduced to Seric first and then they brought in the cone beam. Um, but now as we look back at, at the way that uh, workflows truly uh, you know, we, we have traditional workflow and you have disruptive workflow. Um, when you, when you match disruptive workflow with disruptive technology, you know, I can show you, you, you come, you, you come out to one of our events and I'll map out your practice and we can show you as you add this technology, a 20, 25, a 30% bump in, in growth. So we're not talking about revenue replacement. We're talking about revenue uh, increase and what that really means to your practice. I mean, ultimately the more successful I am, the more I can give back to my community the more successful I am, the more I can give back to my team. Um, it's, it's this complex that, you know, a lot of times we get in this, oh, well, you know, I don't want to charge. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, you know, be that successful because I don't want to look, you know, I'm worried about a certain look or feel in my community. Hey, the more successful I am, the more I can give back. If I don't have it, I can't give it back. So uh, I've gone through a real paradigm shift in my concept of, uh, as a dentist, you know, as I brought on this technology to realize, man, I can, I can provide better service. I can provide a better experience. Uh, it's faster. Uh, when we're talking about a, a consumer market where, where our patients are dealing with Amazon getting delivered the same day, my wife, you know, ordered something the other night, we were leaving town at, at seven in the morning. She ordered it literally at 1159. And it was on my doorstep before I left at 7am from Amazon. I'm like, right? That's what our patients are dealing with. And they're coming to our practices and you've got to take, you know, all these images and you're going to take an impression and you're going to tell them, I'm not quite sure what is going on with you. Let's give you some more time till it gets worse. And that's a horrible concept. Sam, can I let your attendees in on a little secret? Yeah. I, I can tell you the one way. So, so, so we're, we're pretty clear that technology is going to provide a, a, a better standard of care and I'm, I am utterly convinced and have seen it uh, increase your production and your wealth. It's a win-win. Here's, here's how it won't work. Is if you buy a piece of technology and you don't get your team excited about it, you don't train them on it, you put it in the corner, you hang a smock over it, then you'll be disappointed. If you don't jump into the pool with your team and get them excited, that's how you can fail. 100%. And that's the beauty of going to a, a, a seminar like the, the ones I've seen in action at, at at Dr. Bowenkel's facility, um, you're the, the, I've seen entire teams there and they leave so effusive and so excited that you just know they're going to be successful. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and it, it is, it, you know, you talk about cost and investment. So if we're gonna invest in ourselves, you know, when you talk about uh, your dental education, did it cost you something or was it an investment? What's been your ROI? If you've been in practice 5, 10, 15 years, what kind of a life did it provide you? Or did you pay it off? Are you still paying it off? Did you refi it at 2%? Is it, is it still the lowest debt slash investment, the best one you've ever made in your life? Because it, it actually changed your life and it changed everybody that comes in contact with you in the profession. It changes their lives. So you talk about investment. Let's talk about the next investment. Next investment in your career, in your profession, and you as an individual really needs to be Combeam. If you haven't done it, looking at Combeam, invest. You know, it's gonna cost a certain amount, but when you talk about invest, you need to invest in yourself, you need to invest in your team, you need to invest in your patient. And you need to expect an ROI. I think that's something I didn't understand 
seven, eight years ago when I first stepped into this is I did not expect an ROI because that wasn't a discussion. Now, as we walk through this and we understand we've got resources like Dr. Timothy, we've got resources like Doug, they can go through. Here is your expected ROI. If it's going to cost me $100,000, I should expect a $300,000 ROI. What is that going to do for my practice? How do I get there? Now we can start having real intelligent conversations of here's your strategy, here's your revenue streams, here's how it's going to increase your value, here's how it's going to increase your, your revenue, here's what to expect from an ROI. Would you agree, Doug? Is that, I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about, right? Yeah, and I love the phrase ROI, return on investment, and, and I love the, the, to tweak it and say you can't get a return without some investment. The investment has to be, the I has to be there before the R can be there. And, and by the way, you touched on one of my, or it made me think of one of my bugaboos is when someone's, a dentist will call me up and say, my CPA said it's not in the budget for me to purchase technology. Okay, that's, that's your CPA looking in the rearview mirror. You want somebody looking through the dashboard of the car and saying, wait a minute, how much am I going to invest in this? And what's my return going to be? Is it, is it profitable for me? Forget about the budget. It's about improving your practice, improving your level of care, and improving your, your, your income. It's, it's all meshed together. So it's a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset. And I think that is, it becomes more and more rele relevant as we've survived 2020, as we go into 2021. When we start talking about trying to be uh, you know, COVID resistant or tolerant. We talk about recession tolerant, um, being able to survive these episodes and these, these uh, you know, whether it's economic or, 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 or medical, you know, and, you know, interruptions to our way of life. I got to tell you, I haven't seen a better solution to a dental practice as technology to resist the effects of these external sources that affect everybody, whether it's economical or health or otherwise, to be able to have the resources and have that technology uh, really truly uh, fortifies me as a dentist, as a practice, and, and, and actually, in my mind, secures my future in the profession and working with my patients. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> I love it. Let's do this. I know we're getting close to wrapping up. Do we have any other questions? Anything out there looming that, that people are being perfect? Let's flip. Uh, let's 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 wrap up really quick. Uh, the biggest thing in my mind, with as we talk about uh, technology and bridging that gap, is training, 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 training. So we're not merely talking about education. We're talking about training. So this is getting out, seeing it, doing it, bringing, getting your team. I love uh, Doug's interaction. If we get our team excited, they come out, they see it guess what? That ship is going to move. You know, as, as the CEO, as the president, as the CFO, as the COO, I've got all those hats and I've got the practitioner hat. There's so much energy that goes into my practice to try to move it in a certain direction. I bring my team out to an event like we have, uh, you, know, up, you know, upcoming where, again, our, our playground's open. The, the 3D Infusion Playground, Arizona, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't going to say it, but today was 75 sunny. Um, we're we're Stop open. Stop it. I, you know, I, I, I love the snow. I love the cold weather. Dr. Timothy's out snowmobiling. Doug's, you know, surviving ice storms. I know there's, there's weather all across the country. Uh, Arizona is open. We're sunny. We're warm. Uh, you know, look at, you know, jump onto our website, look at, look up 3D infusion, look what's coming up. We have some training in, in uh, OSA sleep. We have an implant course in March. Um, I think we've got a, a sleep course, a really unique uh, collaboration, uh, collaboration with, with uh, uh, shark education uh, coming from Zephyr, coming out of Canada, that has the simple sleep solution, an amazing product, a new, a new take, a new version of what sleep and how to integrate sleep into your practices uh, and understand what that means. <laughs> I can't tell you how many patients are coming out of COVID going, oh, I didn't know I snored. I, you know, I haven't been home and I, and I didn't know my wife snored. Everybody, everybody's around their, each other more going, you have a problem. You know, you don't breathe when you sleep at night. You know, what is that? I mean, I can't tell you that has become more and more common of patients coming in. It's an easy conversation to have, but being educated in it, being trained in it, you know, investing in my team, my patients, my practice all comes through training, 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 training. Um, I'm going to leave you with this last slide, bridge the gap. Uh, there is an opportunity to bridge the gap that comes through training. Look us up on the website. The, site. Uh, the last little plug that we're going to go to, I'll have you go full screen. Um, the last little thing we're going to look at uh, is a reminder of that March 12th. So March 12th 
is the, the best opportunity we've seen in the last 12 months to get uh, a live uh, interaction with, with other professionals in, 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 the, in this dental space, being able to look at it. So this is a real unique offering. Uh, those of you that are on, on this call or out there, um, if you have a comb beam, this isn't necessarily for you. Um, jump on the website, look at our trainings, bring your team out. We'll train you um, live in person on workflows like sleep, like implant, like ortho. Bring your team, get them calibrated, get them excited, go back to your practice and, and just, just kick butt. It, it's a great and awesome experience. Those of you that don't have comb beam, that March 12th date is for you. That's a date where you'll be able to interact with us directly. You'll have my team. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Dr. Timothy here. We're going to have uh, Doug Fedig here. We're going to be live streaming, streaming you to your practice as a team. We're going to have the, the Dent Supply Serona rep. We're going to have the Henry Shine reps. Have the technology in your offices. You're going to have models. You're going to have opportunity to work and talk and interact with us directly. There is a small window. I believe there's only openings for 20. So the first 20 that sign up for this, uh, that's all we're able to handle because of the, just the platform that this is set up. Uh, to have this type of an intimate setting and be able to interact with you and answer your questions and drive that. Um, take a look at the link. The link uh, is on the chat. Uh, you can click on that and register. Um, I'm getting notes. I'd hold the notes up, but uh, you know, we, that doesn't make sense. Jump on the chat, talk to your Henry Shine rep. Uh, you know, how you signed up for this uh, actually probably has a link as well. They'll be sending out some more uh, information regarding that, but a great opportunity to really see what this is. And I'm also gonna encourage you too, if you liked what you saw, you really wanna see something special. A lot of talk today, a lot of great discussion. I loved it. I appreciate Dr. Timothy. Doug, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to be with us tonight. Next week's gonna be super exciting. So next week, we're gonna demonstrate the 10 minute implant. As a GP, as a general practitioner dentist, getting trained on implantology. When I signed up for my combing, that main thing was I wanna do implants. It took me a year and a half to place my first implant because I saw things I'd never seen before. I didn't have time to go through the training. And what was really interesting is all the training was coming from the specialty environment rather from a general dentist environment. And it's different. The way that we do, do implants needs to be different. The technology provides that opportunity where I can consistently and, and efficiently provide an implant to my patient in 10 minutes. And I'm telling you, it's real. If I can do it, you can do it. We can train you, we can talk to you. So we're gonna demonstrate that start to finish live. Um, everybody kind of teases, are you really gonna do that live? This is not recorded. Uh, as an in dentistry, you know, there is always something that will happen. Uh, so if nothing else, join us to see if the implant goes in, if we get, uh, you know, I always, as we train in implantology, it's always fun to bring a, a general dentist in and go, okay, here's the great news. Uh, eventually all bleeding stops. So, you know, you don't really have to worry. At some point, the bleeding is going to stop. No big deal. So um, join us, see, see what can be done, if it can be done, how it can be done. It's, it's an amazing opportunity to look and see. So next week, Tuesday, same time, uh, the playground will be open here in Arizona. We'll have a live patient. Um, other than that, I think we're, we're great. Yes, great question. If you can't make March 12th, will there be another? Yes, we're going to be running another series. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh, and, and working with Henry Shine. We're probably looking probably May, June for that one. So that will be up and coming. We're going to get through this series first and get this interaction. And then you'll start to see the upcoming events, uh, more events being, being broadcast for you to do that. Um, other than that, Tracy, I'll kick it back to you. Doug, uh, Dr. Timothy, thank you so much. Appreciate you taking the time. Tracy? This concludes the end of part one of the 3D Expo On Demand series. If you have any questions about what you've learned, please reach out to your Henry Schein representative. If you're interested, this event series continues with part two titled 3D Infusions 10-Minute Implant, How to Maximize the ROI in Your CBCT. To watch part two, please visit henryscheindigital.com slash 3D Expo to register.